Are you ready to be the best that you can be? Join hybrid business coach and consultant Charity Brown and her guest as they give you behind the scenes access to the insider tips and tricks that will help you take your business to the next level. Charity has an extraordinary approach to boosting businesses to break out of their modes, influence their industries, and become leaders of their packs. And she's ready to pass this inspiring knowledge on to you today. Learn how to change your game and build your business into what you've always dreamed of, right here on the Create Clarity with Charity Podcast. Hello and welcome to Create Clarity with Charity. Today I have an amazing guest, Ms. Aria Johnson. TV personality, hello, from Beverly Hills Pond and at uh, on Discovery, the brand new show, Nature is Fly. Not only that, she's the creator of The Golden Voice and coach for many celebrities. Um, let's say hello to Miss Aria Johnson. Hi. Hey, it's so nice to be here, Charity. <laughs> Awesome. I'm so happy you're here. Lucky us to be able to get some value from somebody who has, you know, graced so many stages and, you know, has an amazing TV career along with helping other artists really step into their voice. So, oh, so thankful thank you. you're here. Thank you. It's lucky me that I get to talk to your audience. I know you have a lot of really interesting people, business owners, um, both women and men who are just ready to make improvements in their life and become the best people that they can be. So, hey guys, it's nice to meet all of you. Can't wait to get to know you as well. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. She's going to have some major tidbits for us to really be able to stand in our power and own our voice for 2024. So I know that we're all kind of curious a little bit more than, I mean, you've had some great success on TV and, you know, stages, um, but we want to know you a little more personally. And, you know, like Create Clarity with Charity is about that evolutionary entrepreneur, the one that kind of created and bootstrapped the career in their business to be able to give back. So I always ask my guests, you know, like, what was their main inspiration? Was it like early childhood or was it, you know, um, kind of a fire that burned inside you to, you know, be able to influence a huge pack of people and audience like you do? That's a great question. Um, for me, ever since I was a little girl, when I was five years old, I knew that I was going to be a singer, singing on stages around the world. I told my kindergarten teacher that I would be a famous singer, and she thought it was cute yeah. and kind of giggled and told my family, and I just kept telling them, this is what I'm going to be. And my dad was like, no, 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 you have to get a real job, you have to go to college, uh, you know, become an accountant, CPA like me. <laughs> Um, and, and by age eight, I knew that after my singing career, I would be a speaker because I wanted to influence women and men, but mostly women around the world and, and, and however way I could. And it's a, a weird thing for an eight year old to want, but I knew I would have a singing career and I knew I would have a speaking career. What I didn't expect was the acting career in the middle of it. Oh, right. And that just sort of happened because I had been touring, I was opening for Ludacris in the music business, I had won all these awards like, you know, best indie artist, best female artist, the E-World Music Award, all these things that seemed prestigious at the time, but I just, I wasn't happy. I had mm -hmm. been in the music business um, professionally getting paid to do it from the time I was 15 years old, and here I was you know, in my late 20s approaching 30, and I was like, my album had come out, I was doing the thing, and I just wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I decided I was like, I'm I'm done with this business. I had been I burned out. I had been in it for so long that I was ready to move on to the next thing. And that's when I launched the Golden Voice. I yes. decided that I wanted to help other um, women specifically not have to go through the pain I had to in the music business. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to teach them here. Here's how you can make it in the music business and be happy. So I would teach um, singing lessons, songwriting lessons, and artist development, and I would help them with the business plan and coach them with everybody in LA, like who's legit. Here, you know, hey, recording studios are soundproof. Don't go alone if you're a female. That kind oh, of right. thing. Oh, right. Yes. Um, and at, after that happened, um, I was I started getting really successful in my business, working with celebrities, and that's when Beverly Hills Pawn called and asked me to be the music expert on their show, and. Um, I ended up being the music expert for five seasons, 62 episodes. I was in every 
episode, did not know what I was doing. I was an actress on the show. I was reading lines, trying to memorize 30 pages of script a day. And I just kind of fell in love with performing in a different way. Nice. So, to, so you taught young artists um, <clears throat> as a music expert in Beverly Hills, right? And then you took all your knowledge and brought it to the girls to really hone into their voice for stage artists. And and uh, you work, work for a major recording studio or is that after? So um, I worked with artists from every major label and Disney mm -hmm. stars and just people who were, some of them were A-listers, some of them were new artists who I was helping, but I would just sort of handpick my clients and see who I could help get to the next level because mm -hmm. I wanted to bring positivity to the world. So it would be an artist that I thought could do that. And then I would almost like, I would call it life coaching for this mm -hmm. audience, but really it was consulting. It was music mm -hmm. business consulting, teaching people how to avoid the pitfalls, get there faster, better, and then be happy in the process. Yes, I love that. And that's, you know, that evolved over time because now you have an awesome program and also doing very inspirational talks to take people out of that overwhelm, frustration, anxiety, burnout. You know, there are tactics and tools that, you know, they don't teach us in school or you learn through the hard knock of business, right? And just evolving. Um, so let's talk about that because it wasn't, you know, just that like it took a toll on you like it oh, really yeah. it really it, you know you're saying it like yeah it just was hard don't go to the studio alone you know you'll be overwhelmed but yeah. really it really almost killed you mentally yeah. emotionally physically and you know let's talk about that comeback you know because we all have the valley high and then we hit the 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 um I mean the mountain high and then hit the valley low and being able to get back up, which is what you've done. But we want to know how you made it through, like what you've overcome, you know, because that is so true because it did kind of eat your body and life from the inside, yeah. kind of being in the industry, even though you've had all this great fame, you know, super good success. You're beautiful. Thank you know, you. it seems like you have everything, right? So let's talk about that, how we can just kind of be our worst enemy and while doing and looking like everything is just so wonderful, right? Yeah. So when I was on top of the world was when I had made it on the show. I mean, it, it's not like I was an A-lister. I, I joke that I was a D-lister, but hey, I was on the list. It's yeah. kind of a Kathy Griffin joke, but I was in the club, right? I had made it. I was on billboards. Um, I had five yeah. seasons of a show. We were about to film seasons six and seven. And um, at that point, I decided, like, even though I had fell in love with performing, the environment was so toxic. I mean, I was working, like, 16 hours a day with my commute. I would get up at 5, drink a diet Red Bull. Like, I would get the script at 5 and not be able to look at it till I was in the makeup chair at, like, you know, at 6.30 because of traffic. Um, and I'd be in the makeup chair, like, trying to memorize 30 pages of script just running on Red Bull because I felt like I had to be underweight to be on television. So oh, I was, right. like eating salad and chicken and egg whites and which now depriving yourself of the nutrients the fuel yeah, I, you needed to really do all that I was under fueled because I felt the camera added 10 to 15 pounds and so I dropped 10 to 15 pounds and I was already a, a fit person so it was very toxic for me in that way um mm -hmm. and the the set was actually you know it was it was a tough environment to to be on because you're there all day long so basically I was getting five hours of sleep um, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're trying to go out to lunch and then people start taking your picture, which was weird for me. Cause it was the first time I was actually famous. Cause I, when I was an artist, I was successful, but I was not recognized on the street. Like oh, right. I, I wasn't like, you know, Beyonce or anything. I was just like an indie artist, but a successful indie artist. I sold a <laughs> lot of records. I was performing, um, yeah. but I was incognito. And then when I was on that show it, I actually like every time someone would ask for a picture, I'd be like excited. But when it got weird was when you're out to dinner and then people are like sneak filming you. And oh, like, right. Oh my God, no wonder celebrities are so paranoid. Like I can't even, if me, uh, who's was like, I'm thinking I'm a nobody is feeling like this. Imagine how like Tom Cruise must feel. 
That's yeah, so it's such an invasion. And so it's a heaviness, right? So you're feeling like I'm getting anxiety now. I'm feeling yeah. insecure. Yeah. Are people following me? It's so clear. all those pressures and all that kind of head trip eat for the fame really, you know, kind of took you on, um, you know, in, even though you're famous and everyone loved you on TV, you ended up being your worst critic because you're super hypersensitive now right. and all this stuff. Is, okay. So let's talk about that because this is stuff that people never talk about in the business because it looks so glitzy glammy and that's everyone just wants to be famous and be on yeah. TV and it looks so awesome. Um, but really like if there's, you know, <laughs> a way that you can grow and evolve like you have, because you're still on TV. You have a great show on Discovery Channel, but it's not like a set setup. Is that one funner? Oh my gosh, it's so much fun because I'm on a travel show with my husband and my daughter who's seven years old. So yeah. Luke and Kayliana. And we did this just for fun because Luke was yeah. already on Discovery Channel. He's been on Shark Week and he does the podcast for Discovery Channel um, oh, cool. for like years. and. So we pitched the show with the family because he was traveling without us. And we're like, we want to go with you. Oh, and awesome. we travel around. We do cool little adventures. Like I got to um, dive with sharks in the Georgia Aquarium oh, with six species of sharks. And it's one of the largest aquariums in the world. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah, so we got to do that. And my daughter's watching. And then we, we got to like um, tight line. Um, across a valley in Bend, Oregon, like I'm talking a canyon and we're on this tightrope and we've got mm -hmm. to like handle boa constrictors and just yeah. basically anything with nature or we put a little sciencey spin on it and we try I to love it. it. That's the living life to the fullest. And then you're sharing it with all us so we can all live vicariously through you. You can go swim <laughs> with sharks and you know parasail over high mountains and swim with alligators. Uh, yeah. yeah alligators that was that was scary i'll tell you oh my gosh um, yeah like, so that's so so fun, fun okay so it can go there's a flip side right but it took you a minute to get there and find your groove right because like tv can be really fun and yeah, then you can it, make it but like maybe just being like you know in a that sounds more like an independent like channel development through through discovery or like you know not so mainstream like beverly right. hills palm right like, we, was we like, get to like a real to, job or something right? yeah we get to control the narrative that's what yeah like you control the narrative and, and the schedule right yeah. and like yeah yeah okay so cool. back okay to so, the yeah sorry go ahead oh yeah so so let's talk about you know when you were kind of like at that state where you were just like i cannot handle this life happened you moved to like oregon right and yeah you self imploded, you couldn't take the pressure anymore, your body kind of just went out on you and anxiety and pain yeah. and just everything. You're just enough, right? And this is after you already got married and had a baby and like all these other things that moms are doing while they're working, or while they're having a career, while they're building their, you know, their their brand. Like we work ourselves until we're like in the ER, right? And I think you can help some of us understand like, you know, while you're there, you know, what are ways that we can kind of like pull ourselves out if we're feeling, you know, overwhelmed and stressed with anxiety and pressures of yeah. those kinds of things. So um, I'll, I'll start with what happened that took me down and then I'll tell you how I took myself back up and out of it. Um, so I'd moved to Bend, Oregon. I figured I would just fly back and forth to do the show for season six and seven. Um, and I had a baby and I knew that it was going to be an issue for the show, but I didn't know how big of an issue. Well, lucky me, the show ended up getting canceled. So I'm living in Bend, Oregon. I'm, you know, I'm a new mom. I thought it was going to be the best thing ever. And for some reason that performing, perfecting, pleasing, just became about being a mom. And now I'm running my business because all my clients, they're on tour, they're all over. I could do it via Zoom. Mm -hmm. I yeah. was doing that, trying to make a ton of money, making a lot of money, trying to change lives while mm -hmm. having a new baby and not having any friends or family around. And I mm -hmm. got postpartum anxiety, mm -hmm. postpartum depression, um, but mostly anxiety. And I just pushed through it because I'm a fighter, right? Mm -hmm. Superwoman. I kept telling yeah. myself, I'm superwoman. And my husband would travel for three months a year because he's still doing TV. And, you know, he'd be in Switzerland, the Swiss Alps, like having a seven star Michelin chef dinner. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, you just had a what course dinner? And he's like, oh, I didn't even enjoy it. I'm like, uh, could we trade places? So I was yeah. feeling like, 
like every mom can relate to like feeling alone, whether you have mm-hmm. a great husband, the or loneliness. Not. Yeah. Alone, when you right? could probably have went with him with the baby, right? You didn't really have to mm-hmm. be there alone. I mean, or mm-hmm. be, no, 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 no. Oh. I, I couldn't, my baby didn't sleep. She was like a oh. part, party animal. She would sleep during the day and party all night. So oh, nice. part, of it, <laughs> part of it was the sleep deprivation, but yeah, so I was at home doing the thing. Um, and I burned out. I just, I tried to do the perfect Pinterest parties. Like she had to have the unicorn cake for her first birthday for the smash cake. And I wanted the balloons to be perfect. I wanted to prove to the world that I could be a good mom too. Mm -hmm. And I was beating myself up about why I didn't just want to be a stay at home mom because Mm -hmm. my mom was a stay at home mom. So I had this vision like, God, why don't I want to stay home? Like why, why do I have have these dreams of helping other people? And so I was, when I was at work, I was thinking of her. When I was with her, I was thinking of work. And I just completely burned myself out because my body was like, no, you're not going to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. It was one thing before you're a mom, but now, hell no. And I, I remember we moved. It was my wedding anniversary, July 17th, 2018. Um, we were moving into a new house in Bend. Um, I was doing the move by myself with movers because my husband was flying back it's- from Cancun for Shark Week. Oh my gosh. Um, I had the baby. My nanny had just quit. I was working 16 hours a day. I had both houses. So I was trying to sell furniture in the other house, I should do house showings, making it perfect. And I remember I had four movers there. Thank God I, I'm fortunate enough to have that. Yeah. Um, I remember after my husband gets home, he's, he flew in that day because that was the fastest he could get here. And I collapsed. Oh my gosh. I completely just collapsed. And thank God he had the baby. I, and, and I ended up in the ER. For exhaustion and your uh, and high blood pressure and this. No, they they didn't or... know what was wrong with me. They they told me it was in my head. They tried to oh. prescribe me antidepressants and she gave me uh, acid blockers. It was it was a female doctor. It was like the very beginning of the ga- being. Oh gaslit. no, yeah. Then the over prescribing yeah. and then you're just in the loop, right? And they're trying to diagnose and misdiagnosing and just keep pumping you full. I mean, I. I get it when I was in the restaurant business and having like four locations and 300 employees and being a mom and having the herniated back explosion of pain. All they did was medicate me and give me Vicodin and give me steroids and I blew up. Like, so the stress of having like all that pressure on you. And um, so I think like as women entrepreneurs, we really can relate to that, you know, feeling like we just have to, you know, raise the bar every day higher and higher until we just give out on ourselves, right? Because it never seems like it's enough or like, you know, it's, it's like we can never, you know, get, get it all done, right? And so I love that you're an overachiever and you're a total get it, go getter, you know, and that you're like, you know, we burn out either way. Like there is burnout. It is a like medical condition. And, you know, that's what the create clarity with charity podcast is about. And the, and the book is about my corporate burnout after entrepreneurship and doing everything and being everything to everybody and holding the whole ship down and not taking time for me. And like really destroying myself by serving everyone else and then forgetting about me. So that's how I want to take us into your amazing program and dial into the importance of what, you you know, um, you know, what um, manifestations you had while you were healing for like, what, like three or four years, you know, from your burnout and your collapse, like, let's talk about how, because I think there's times where we just want to give up where our body just says enough, yeah. our, we're just like done, like just rest, recharge, you know, recalibrate, right. And you have the luxury and the support and a lot of um, great people around you and, and a great mindset, right. To kind of decide because you chose to not give up and to like be disabled or you know stay down like so let's talk about when you were you know healing from all that and you know you were kind of taking time to reflect let's how did you pull out of that do you um do you want me to go into like how I hit rock bottom first get the pain oh. point harder or do you want me to go straight into um well I think we I got think. your rock bottom part I think we're I, I mean unless you want I mean we could stay we could we could keep talking about it but I think like we get that like the the pain unless you have some really gold tokens that you want to say like this was an enlightening moment when I was yeah um you okay, know so yes cool so 
the <laughs> the rock bottom point was where I was on five different medications. It had been years of misdiagnoses, 24 hours a day, stabbing pain. My throat was bleeding. I was like coughing up blood. Like I could, I lost my voice for like years, so I couldn't coach. I had to call all my clients and cancel with them. I couldn't work. Um, because I was in 24 seven head to toe, physical, like muscles, joints, everything pain. And uh, the rock bottom happened when I started having suicidal thoughts. And I called my husband, I said, this isn't like me. I, I would never kill myself, but this is what's going on. He called my mom, my mom flew out and we, I stayed at a cabin in the woods for a week in um, Sun River. And I went off all of the medication at once and withdrew and I literally had to crawl to the bathroom. I was so sick. I couldn't do anything. And I spent months nursing myself back to health with the help of obviously my family. Um, but what really did it for me was I, I went to a conference. I said, I'm not going to live like this. This isn't fair to my daughter. This isn't fair to my family. I went to a conference um, and I got really hyped up. It was a Tony Robbins conference. I walked yes, on fire. Yes, Firewalker. Um, and I, we both I, walked on fire. Hey. Yes, girl. <laughs> and I, I and didn't get myself. burnt. It's possible. <laughs> I know, it is. And, and I clawed myself out of the hole that had been built physically. And I was still in pain 24 hours a day, but my mindset was the only thing I could control. And so that's mm. when I started employing all of these techniques because I didn't have the right medical care yet. I didn't, I hadn't gone the holistic route yet. I was still on the meds that caused more side effects. So I was off those five meds, but now there was new meds because I mean, I had to try and heal. I'm a fighter. I was never gonna just roll over and die and be like disabled and I can't speak. Yeah. Um, so I started doing things and some of the things that I do, like taking it, taking you from the top of my day to the bottom of my day, the first thing I do that you can use is called my morning theta gratitude. Mm -hmm. And what I do when I wake up is before I even open my eyes, you're in theta state, which is like almost like a dreamlike state. Before I open my eyes, I put a fake smile on my face. I try to make it real. And I think of three things I'm grateful for. And sometimes they can be like my daughter, my house, blah, blah, blah. And But mostly I try to have them be in the last 24 hours. What that does is it makes your brain look for gratitude throughout the day because you know that you're going to have to say the gratitude in the morning. So mm -hmm. the morning theta gratitude exercise. Yay, I love it. I it. Gratitude. It's fantastic. And then everything else I do, I use habit stacking. Um, what habit stacking is, is you take a habit that you already do, and then you choose a new habit that you want to combine, and then you simply combine them. Like, for example, if you were to do 10 squats while you're brushing your teeth, right? That's habit stacking. Just one mm -hmm. second. Sorry, I transform your life with Arias. While you're talking about some of your amazing tools and your tips of, you know, being the powerhouse you are, you know, keep going. I just want to show your site as we were going on and, oh, cool. and yeah. kind of reflect on, you know, I, you know, but we're adult, totally listening. Yeah, absolutely. So I do my morning uh, gratitude and it just puts you in a better mood versus waking. I used to wake up with like my heart beating. I would drink some coffee and I would attack the day. Like I had to win a prize for how much I could get done. And I think a lot of women do that. We think we have to have the perfect house, the perfect body, the perfect wife, the perfect parties we throw for our children that they, that are ridiculous and out of control, the per, you know, show up at our work and we just can't do it all. So we have to try these techniques to, make our lives better. And the second thing that I do, um, which I know not everybody ha like has access to a sauna, but what I do is I ended up buying one for my backyard, bought it off Craigslist, someone, oh, wow. it was new, unused, so, you know, like, but someone had bought it and didn't use it. So mm -hmm. it was, wasn't that expensive, but I go in the sauna and then while I'm in the sauna, I have it stack. First thing I do is I wrap my hair in heatless curling rod um, I don't know if you guys have seen oh, one of like yeah. a rod it's, and you put it on, you just wrap your hair around and that's how I got these curls today. I you love know, it. And you do it in the sauna. That's in the a sauna. great idea. And I just tie it up because I don't I sweat in my those. hair. Like, I need those in my life right now. Oh, no. girl, it, was like, it was like $10 on Amazon. Oh my gosh. I need um, to get some. So I get my hair done um, and that's something I would want to do anyway. Um, and then while nice. I'm in the sauna, I meditate. And I do what I like to call the three P's meditation. You do past, present, or potential meditation, which is future meditation. Mm -hmm. So for past Your meditation, and, yeah, and I rotate these depending on what I need. For the past meditation, or you can do hypnosis, and I find these all on YouTube, guys. It's free. Anyone can do it. 
Um, for the past, I do inner child healing. So a, a lot of our traumas in life determine who we are today. And so if we can go back into our past and try to heal that inner child, then we have a better future. Then yes. I also do present meditations, which would be like, if I'm feeling anxious, I do an anti-anxiety meditation. Or um, if you just wanna be in the present, because let's say you're just addicted to your, your TikTok or your Instagram. Well, if you do the present moment meditations, it forces you to be in the present while you're doing it. Um, and then lastly, I do potential, which is the third P, which is future self meditation. And I spend a lot of time here. I find them on YouTube, they're different every day. Um, when I find ones I like, I just make a little folder. And that is where you meet your future self, like you in five years in the meditation, and then they give you advice. Because the truth is, guys, all of the advice that we need is actually comes from within us. We, we seek yes. it everywhere else. We go to therapists, we tell our friends, we tell our grocer, we tell our neighbors, especially as women, we just talk, 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 talk. But we have all of the answers within. So if you do this future self meditation, you can find a problem and your 65 year old self, your 80 year old self can give you advice. It's all using the imagination. Yes. And you can find this more of this in your golden voice Academy or just your YouTubes or like, do you have the, yeah. So, um, I actually, the golden voice Academy, um, it's the golden voice.com. You just go to the artist development part. Um, that's for like music business people. They can definitely, okay. if you're in the music business, you want to learn how to make it. It's in there. There's a whole, um, section on mindfulness and, uh, mindset mastering your mindset. Awesome. So I mean, anyone could really buy that and then they could just watch that course. Um, but most of it, you know, go to my Instagram, it's instagram.com forward slash Aria Johnson official, or you could go to my Facebook, which is just my handle is Aria Johnson. And I'm posting videos every day about this. Yes. Um, so that's, that's a stack right there. That's my sauna. That's with my hair being done and that's meditation. And if you don't, and that's have like your sauna, power hour. Is that an hour or two or how much time? No, do you... it's, it's 20 minutes. Oh, 20 minutes. 20 okay. minutes. That's it. And, and okay. if, you don't, if you don't have a sauna, because most people don't have access to a sauna, you can do something like stretch and listen to a meditation while you're stretching or, you or can hot tub walk, or pool or walk. Or yes. Anything to like heat up your body, stretching, walking, just moving your body. And then you can stack on the mindfulness meditation as well. I love it. <laughs> then the next thing I do, which anyone can do at home, is an ice, like an ice bath or a cold shower. So if you don't have access to an ice bath, you can just turn your shower to cold for 30 seconds and work your way up to three minutes and then work your way up to five minutes. But what that does, I do the ice bath every day after. It yes. It reduces inflammation. It's great for muscle recovery. It boosts your immune system. It increases metabolism. It improves your mood. And most importantly for me, it increases your mental toughness because every single day, I do not want to get into that ice bath. You guys. No. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I totally ah! get that. I have I a hard time in. diving in my pool in the winter. I'm like, no, yeah. it's too cold. Oh my Absolutely. Gosh. But it's so every some guts. Yeah. So you're training yourself that if I can do this, I can do anything. And I'm doing this first thing in the morning. So look, you might just stretch out, listen to your meditation while you're um, just warming up your body and then jump, you know, take a shower, do cold at the end and boom, you already started off the day successful. And literally the, you can do a five minute meditation on YouTube, a morning five minute meditation. You can do a 30 second cold shower. There's no excuse not to take care of yourself. Yes. And that's putting yeah. yourself first. So that's one of the, I mean, that's the main healer in that story of yours is putting yourself first and doing these things that are helping you kind of calibrate your day. Um, yeah. So you're living your best life instead of just running on fumes, right? And just depleted from- Yeah. And speaking yeah. of fumes, another really important thing, I used to skip breakfast in the morning and call it intermittent fasting. Do you think that someone oh, with anxiety wow. needs to be fasting? No, I need to eat. So now I eat breakfast every single day, no matter what. And I just make it simple. I eat the same thing. Yeah. I eat two I, eggs with some spin a bunch of spinach chopped up. I scramble it together and then throw in avocado, some kind of like pumpkin seeds. And I use Greek yogurt to get the protein kind of like hit enough protein for the day. So yeah, I love that. Tastes like Lots of protein. Know, yes. Cream. Yeah. So, so that's great. Protein. 
that's the that's super amazing that it you know the flip side the yin and the yang right like from the dark um experience you had you came out shining because now you love yourself more and you have found some things that you can share you know like with the audience and and with your clients and now you have a way better way of life um so yeah, it was kind of a gift do you think you would have found it if you didn't hit rock bottom Absolutely not, because I knew a lot of this stuff before, but I didn't prioritize myself because I prioritized my work. I prioritized my child and my husband. And I put everyone else first, and nobody was making me do it. Like, I am married to the most amazing guy. He'd be like, go to the gym when the baby was six months old, and I'd be like, oh, but I, I have to clean the house, and he'd be like, go. So it was, it was me holding myself back, and mm -hmm. I had heard the term, you know, like on the airplane, put the oxygen mask on yourself first because if you pass out, you can't put it on your baby. And yeah. I didn't understand it to my soul because I didn't love myself. I spent years trying to figure out how to love myself, but I didn't do it with actions. And love isn't a feeling. Love is an action. Even yes. in a relationship, it's you can feel the feelings of love and then treat each other like crap. Right. But and then you can love and give all this love to others and completely hate yourself. And so let's yep. talk about that because as an actor, as like a, you know, a personality where you're putting yourself out there, you're completely vulnerable or everyone's judging and criticizing you, you know, so you turn into like your worst critic, right? And yeah. you start having, you know, imposter syndrome or, you know, being extremely self-critical and, and, you know, um, I think that's kind of also human nature. So let's talk about in some of your speaking, find your voice programs and, and dialing into, you know, really um, combating insecurity and yeah. like becoming that best version of yourself. Let's talk about kind of some frameworks around that. Cause I know there's a lot of creatives on here, you know, video production, people, artists, people that would really love to hear like, you know, how can we love ourselves better? How can we change the narrative? And I know you have some tips and tricks um, kind of that you do um, that you can share with the audience. Yeah, absolutely. So loving yourself, like I said, is an action, not a feeling. You don't look in the mirror and think I'm a goddess today. I mean, maybe some days, right? But loving yourself <laughs> is doing the work. Like, have you ever been in a relationship where someone says they love you, but then their actions don't show it? It's like, love like love me in the way I need to be loved. So we have to do that with ourselves. So for example, if you're feeling anxiety or feeling stressed, you can do the four, six, eight breathing technique, which I do all the time. I learned this because the US Navy used it when the soldiers are stressed out um, for sleep. But you can do it anytime during the day, and I teach this to my clients. You breathe in for four, you hold for six, and you breathe out for eight. Basically, you wanna breathe out double, however you do this. And by doing this, you can actually slow down your heart rate. So divers will do stuff like this when they're free diving to slow down their heart rate. I teach singers how to do this before they get on stage for 20,000 people but you can control your heart rate. I used to drink coffee and just go, go, go and be excited to be high energy. And it was like, wait, this isn't loving myself. Loving myself is taking 60 seconds right now, putting everything on pause and just doing all, you know, this breathing exercise. Mm -hmm. It's simple. It's I free. love that. Everything I'm giving you guys really has a free alternative, like these YouTube meditations, the, you know, you can stretch or walk instead of the sauna. You can, they're, they're all, there's free ways to do everything. You can walk on the grass and connect, you know, be a tree hugger. It, mm -hmm. <laughs> some people say it yeah. works, whether it's the grass or a mountain or getting out with nature, just getting outside. Like sometimes I would work all day and not even leave the house. Now yeah. I step outside, breathe in the humid air because I'm in Florida. Yeah. Okay, thank God I'm alive. <laughs> yes. I love that. It's like expansion. Your energy field's expanding and you're and then like release at the same time, right? And like get really grounded and just filled up with light. So breathing. Okay. Amazing. Breathing. Breath work has a great healing modality. Like it Another helps me with my pain. Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, so let's talk about the, you know, the insecurity and like a good okay. way, just daily, like effortlessly okay. change the way you think about yourself. So 
everyone has insecurity. I mean, I have met the most beautiful Victoria's Secret models in LA and they are talking about needing to lose weight for a, a show. And it, it just used to blow my mind. I was, you know, 22 years old in LA going, how the heck, you're like you're a perfect specimen. You're not even real. Did I say specimen? <laughs> it's really special. Specimen. I mean, they're like these goddesses and I'm like, why do they still not think they're good enough? And it's like, oh, okay, well, it's their job. But then I started to realize the older I've gotten and now, you know, I'm in my mid forties, every woman I meet criticizes her looks, her body, something. Oh, like you come over. Oh, sorry. My house is a mess. Like, do you think I really care that like your house is a mess? No, I'm here to hang out with you. And yet I do the same thing. And so during the pandemic, I really just started getting kind of low. Like I couldn't, you know, I had just moved again. Now I was in San Diego, didn't know anybody. I, I moved the week the pandemic started and I was walking by in my like same pair of Columbia cargo pants. I had like five pairs and I had all these Walmart $3 t-shirts. For some reason I was wearing those every day and just rotating. And I would be like, oh, you look like crap. Wow, you look puffy. Cause I had gained 30 pounds from my health condition. Um, that was hypothyroidism, one of the many mm. health conditions. Um, and I didn't know that yet. So I was eating perfectly clean and I kept gaining weight, which if I had seen another woman that looked like me, I would be like, you are beautiful. Like any plus size models, like all of these girls, I'm like, yes, girl, wear the sexy outfits. You do you. But for some reason with me, I had this like TV body and this TV person in my head that I had to be, I had to be this perfect, small, not take up too much space person. And this is even me enlightened. This is just a few years ago. And mm -hmm. I started to realize like, this is not healthy. Like I'm teaching my daughter body, body positivity and here I am hating on myself. So I developed this new tactic where every time I walked by a mirror, I said, you have to say something nice about yourself. You have to reverse mm -hmm. this. And so I started with, uh, and it had to be about looks. So I started with all I could think of was, I like your eyelashes. I would look in the mirror and say, I love you, Aria. I love your eyelashes. I like your ears. And then it evolved to like, you have beautiful hands. Or I like your forearms because everything else I was just not loving about myself. Mm -hmm. And eventually it worked out to the point of where I was like, my, the fat on my body, which I was not by any means overweight. But I mean, I guess I was a little, but still, I would look at somebody else like that and be like, girl, you look amazing. But in my mind, I wasn't fitting this ideal. So now I started looking at my arms and being like, you know what? I love your dimply arms. You know what? Uh, I love the, the cellulite on those thighs. You, those thighs are strong. You, make, you can walk up the stairs with them. Your arms are strong. You can hold your baby with those. And I shifted mm. my mindset into loving every part of me. And I decided I bought all new clothes. I said, I'm not yes. going to try to fit into my small clothes anymore. And I just started dressing sexy at home. Mm -hmm. I love it. Home. Brand new wardrobe. I started putting on makeup. Like I don't need to do all this, the eyelashes, but I could put on foundation and some mascara and blood. Like I can do the three minute version. Yeah. And so for me, even though that sounds really shallow, like we all worry about our looks. And honestly, the men do too. And they have no one to talk to about it. Mm -hmm. Because men don't get these exercises. So for the men out there, when you walk by the mirror and you're like, oh, I gotta lose this gut. Instead of doing that, say, hey, you did good today on and fill in the blank. Yeah. It's just a technique that worked for me. So um, even while you're just walking by a mirror and you see a reflection going yep. like, oh, dang, you look tired or like, oh, like you yeah. look fat. Be like, yep. I love you, boo. Mirror because, work. Yes. Hello. Because that, <laughs> that voice, that voice inside is not you. That voice is the media, which is designed mm. to make you hate yourself so they can mm. sell products. That yes. is every bully you've ever had. That is maybe a parent who told you, oh, you're gaining a little weight there, honey. It's mm -hmm. not you because you were born into this world. Like my daughter knew nothing about body size and I've tried not to discuss it in my household. We don't discuss other people's bodies. We don't discuss her body, mm -hmm. um, but we, you were not born into this world this way. It, they did it to you, but you can fix it. And yeah. a way to fix it is to name your bully. So I named yes. my bully um, after a real bully that I had in uh, like junior high, high school. Her name was mm -hmm. Tara. And so every time I heard that voice, it's like, oh, you look like crap or, oh, that was dumb that you said, because I have this voice that says, oh, well, that was stupid. And mm. I would just be like, shut up, Tara. Actually, I'm very smart and here's why. And then tell yeah. yourself a few reasons why you're the opposite of whatever. Nice. I love that. So that's rewiring. You're, it's like, you know, you're rewiring your brain and the more you flex that muscle, right? Like the yep. stronger that gets and you'll start noticing that those 
you know, intrusive thoughts stop coming when you look in the mirror. And I can just remember being my own worst bully when I'd be in the mirror, just ripping myself a new one, like nothing's ever good enough. Right. And that continual feeling of like not being pretty enough, not being thin enough, not being enough, not being enough. And I think a lot of women, you know, and guys too, I'm pretty sure they have also these same beliefs where that, you know, people like hold them to these certain standards that they just never feel like they're ever going to attain. Right. And so getting out of that kind of spiral um, and, and it's kind of like inner fitness, I call it like inner fitness exercises, right? Like first you're doing your power hour, you're loving yourself, you're doing your meditation. And then you're coming into the mirror after that and saying, wow, you are beautiful. I'm so proud of you for this. I um, blah, blah, blah. Right. So is it like kind of like an affirmation exercise in the mirror or is it just saying, you know, you look, you look hot today. The, the difference between <laughs> affirmations and what I'm saying is that I don't believe affirmations work because I had tried it before mm. these type of exercises where I just said the words. And the key that I was missing was you can't just say the words. You have to feel it. You have to look deeply into your eyes and be like, you have beautiful eyelashes or whatever. These are fake y'all, but you have to believe it. Yes. (laughs) You have to believe it because if you don't believe it, you can say, you know, you can say there's no storm, there's no storm, there's no storm. But if the clouds are raining down on you and you're getting wet. So I don't believe in fake positive thinking. I believe in you tell yourself something you can believe. I could believe that I had beautiful hands. I couldn't at the time when I started believe I had believing I had a beautiful body. So I had to start with dumb things like that until I could rewire my brain. And I decided I was going to love myself at any size, at any look, because I went through years of gaining 30 pounds, losing 30 pounds, black circles under my eyes, throat bleeding. Like I looked, when I looked the worst, like people told me I looked the best because I would be the thinnest. And I'm like, I didn't eat for 30 days Mm -hmm. because I'm in so much pain that I can't eat. So it's not about other people. It's about finding something that you believe is true about yourself. And it might not even be your body. You might just look in the mirror and be like, you know what? You killed it today at work. Or, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, that cake you made for your family, like that was beautiful. They loved it. But it's finding self-esteem is silencing the inner critic and telling them reasons why they're wrong. Because it's not enough to say, shut up, Tara, the bully. I'm not stupid i have to reinforce it with actually you're really smart you have this degree you studied at nasa you did this blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. yeah i studied at nasa (laughs) you did yeah you you are so smart aria (laughs) oh my god so you're putting success in the place of enoughness right i know you have like there's a lot of people that have put in success you know is feeling enough like it doesn't have anything to do with like how many degrees you have, right? Or like, because you're such an overachiever, how many hours you've been viewed on, you know, prime time and like these huge stages of hundreds of thousands of people that have been cheering to hear you sing, like you've had the ultimate success, but the enoughness, right? Like, is that like the biggest gift or out of all that, like what, what do you feel is like true success? You know, after all, all yeah. that experience you have. Well, first I'll say that fame burns out your dopamine receptors because you get so much dopamine that you can't feel joy doing anything else. So for everyone who's trying to be famous, just be aware that that rush, whether it's from the likes, I don't have that kind of thing on social, but some people have like millions of followers, whatever it is, it's dopamine, dopamine, you're dumping. So you have to mm-hmm. control and slowly drip your dopamine. Otherwise people get caught up in addictions and things like that. But if I had one message, that I want you guys to take away from this. It's that you are enough right now exactly as you are. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be anything for anybody, including yourself. If you did nothing ever again, you are enough. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, and that is success. Like, and looking in the mirror and not feeling like, you know, the worst critic anymore instead you're the biggest cheerleader that's like that's like you know you win when you actually enjoy your own company right and, yeah, and so- success is love in my opinion and mm-hmm. it, it doesn't have to be a partner but for me you know it's it's always been love I was like a musician I would always say love is the answer love is like a hippie but I don't mean like you know weird that kind of love but true success is love, whether it's relationships with um, a partner or your family or your friends, 
but the most important person is love with yourself and I used to think that love with yourself was selfish and gross and egotistical and I was dead wrong because mm -hmm. love with yourself is everything if you love yourself you'll treat yourself just like how you would treat a five-year-old child you'll yeah. eat when you're hungry you'll sleep when you're tired and you'll go to the dang gym because it's good for you Mm -hmm. I love it. And you're shining bright, babe. See, so it's <laughs> the shine comes from the inside, right? Like, yeah. so let's have some last words for the audience, the words to live by books, quotes, anything that really inspires you that you just, Ooh. that will resonate with them. Um, give me one second. I'm going to pull one up. Also the, um, I think we talked about the Rachel Hollis girl stop apologizing. Yeah. No, right. That that's the other thing, like dimming our light and feeling sorry for our success and for our beauty. And yeah. um, right. And you know, really actually embracing our wins and really, <laughs> you know, being that light to others and shining and letting it shine like we are kids again. Like you know, when we were five, we were joyous and free. We were enjoying things. We weren't worried about what everyone was thinking, right? So yeah. um, the mirror work and be kind of silly with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you kind of have to be. So there's this quote that actually changed my life. And I know a lot of you out there listening are trying to have a following. It's like everyone's a celebrity now. We all have social media. We're all using it to promote our businesses and ourselves. And so we're all dealing with the same level of, you know, insecurity. It's just with celebrities, it's just magnified. Like people say, my clients used to ask me for years, their biggest fear was, are they going to change when they get famous? The mm -hmm. ones that weren't famous yet or when they get more famous. And so that would hold them back. And I would tell them, no, success holds a magnifying glass on who you really are. If you're a great person, you're going to do great things with all that money and fame. If you're a crappy person, you're going to do bad things. So who you are is who you are. And don't be afraid of fame or success. Let it amplify the goodness. Now, the mm -hmm. quote that changed my life in that regard is the famous speech it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows, in the end, the triumph of high achievement? And who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails where while bleh, who at the worst if he fails at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat yeah. and we've all heard it you know it's roosevelt's man in the arena but beautiful beautifully beautiful said lives. very powerful you know and as women stepping into our voice our power overcoming, getting back up valiantly, victoriously coming again, standing on the front lines and, and, and standing in our power and being who we came here to be instead of being, you know, um, put in a box and seen and not heard. And, you know, don't be too loud and don't shine too bright girl. Cause you know, they're coming for you. Um, so, <laughs> but you're right about, I mean, if you love you, it doesn't really matter if we're not looking for all that external validation to say, Hey, you're beautiful. Hey, you're loved. Oh, you're enough. Oh, like, right. Mm -hmm. So if we find that in ourselves, we win. And that's yep. what you have done. And you are just shining. I just love what you are doing with your creative you. TV and your coaching programs, helping others find their voice, standing in their power. So everyone check out Aria Johnson, Aria Johnson, A-R-I-A Johnson.com. <laughs> also check her Instagram out and um, watch for her on the next stage because she's going to be gracing them. And um we love to hear from you. So thank you so much for being my guest, Aria, and everyone out there. Make sure you do that mirror work. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Would you mind doing a, um, a close with, I could say my Instagram and my Facebook one more time? Yeah.
Go ahead. Like the actual links, because um, how, how should I get into that? Go ahead. You could just say like, where can we find you? Okay, where can we find you? So just go to Instagram and my handle is Aria Johnson official, or you can find me at Facebook and my handle is Aria Johnson. Reach out, DM me. I'd love to hear your comments and get to know you guys as well. Yes, you guys, make sure you reach out. She's got the golden voice and so many tips and tricks for you guys. Have a beautiful day. Ciao.